to start this video, I want to set a scene for you. You've gone on a night out with the boys, okay? You've had a few drinks, a few moves on the dance floor. You leave the club, you get a kebab. Maybe two. The kebab will try to poison you, but you don't care. You and your boys look at each other in silence until one says, You know what, yeah? Jen and Sancho plays FIFA for quarter of a million a week. You know how many FIFA points you can buy, bro? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot, bro. Yeah. You know what? We should start a podcast. Ah, that'd be class, man. And that's how most podcasts are made. Before we do get into the podcast, let's try to hit 3,000 likes on this video and also subscribe if you're new. 68% of you guys who have watched my recent videos are not subscribed, so it does mean a lot if you guys can. And Mozilla Designs, my own design company, link down below, top of the description for the best football prints on the market, where a brand new range also dropped this week of Legends. So... Go and check it out if you want. And let's get into it. About over a month ago, sorry about that, lads. I said that I was looking into investigating the world of football podcasts. 15 different podcasts, at least, reached out to me within the first two hours. And just to make it clear, probably not talking much about Fleetwood Town in this video. I've reached a breaking point. Genuinely. Sometimes you may have heard a term life ain't fair. This is one of them. There is a monetary value, a reoccurring guaranteed source of income saying the most ridiculous nonsense on purpose and that will make you guaranteed money. Or at least that's what I think is going on here. Because that's the only way that this makes any sense. Now, you may have a really bad take on football. There's no shame in that. Everyone has. <coughs> I get reminded of it every single day. I don't really know what to call this video. So, I'll just call it Football Podcast. Of course, there are different ranges of football podcasts and there are some that are really good or really insightful. Let's call it the Corporate Podcast, which is nice and insightful, but relatively tame. Some more than others, some are a bit more out there, but the kind of corporate ones that's aligned with a business. The rest is Football Podcast, Gary Lineker, Alan Shearer, Micah Richards. I listen to that. That's actually decent because they actually have a laugh there. The Fozcast is, it is decent as well. I've not watched it as much recently. However, it's got some nice little bits of insight there. The Peter Crouch podcast as well. These kind of podcasts are fine, very informational, and especially with a insight of an actual pro footballer, more than welcome, more than happy with that. Unless you're Gabby Abonglahor. I remember seeing this tweet a year ago and it still sticks with me to this day. Gabby Abonglahor takes are so awful. He's got the Liverpool manager actively defending Manchester United. Remarkable. So, what's the actual real point of this video? Well, you got to see it to believe it. I saw QPR fans today and I was thinking to myself, why do people support? I would love to have a conversation with QPR fans to actually understand why these men support these teams. This might be controversial, but I don't think you can proper be into football and like only support that team. You've got to have like a Premier League team, someone that you enjoy in the Premier or something like that. Otherwise, cause yeah, like, yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't be accurate to Stanley. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Premier nah. League football. Hey, you're going to, bro. This was the original breaking point of when I decided to do this video. And I know, right? You're surprised it's not pitch side. That will be later on. Now, I can go into this take because I do think they actually gen genuinely mean this. Word for word, you cannot be proper into football if you don't support a Premier League team. Marvellous. Truly marvellous. And the funny thing is... Fans that don't support a Premier League team would say the literal general opposite to you. And I'm kind of in middle ground here. I've kind of experienced both sides of being in not a Premier League team, but being in Premier League and um, I prefer not to speak. Now I can go on a mad tangent here and go into the emotional backstory, but you don't care. But the simple um, answer here, that's some stupid nonsense. Next clip. So is Harry Kane a better footballer than Troy Daly? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you said that. You said I'd that. I'd be naive to say he's mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Is he a better finisher than me? Yes. Can he head a ball better than me? No. Mm -hmm. Can he control a ball better than me? 
like look after it when there's two men on his back. Mm. No. So when you're winning a game in the 85th minute and you need someone to come on because he's getting a bit tired or whatever, he can't do what I can do. Yeah. When I was going in, if I was going to go in at Spurs, that would have been my role. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. To be fair to Charlie Dini, he did say that Harry Kane was better than him. He should have stopped talking from then. Erling Haaland will not live up to the expectation. I am so bored. Why? Why won't he? Because, because he it. isn't because he isn't the player that everybody thinks he is. People are saying that he's going to win the Golden Boot. That is outrageous. It's so disrespectful to the establishment. Why is that outrageous? It's so disrespectful to the establishment. Being the city the striker. The Mo Salah. The Mo Salahs of the world. The, the Harry Kanes of the world. The Hummin Sons of the world. Give them the respect to turn up in a new league and win the Golden Boot. That would be a ridiculous achievement and he isn't going to do it. Disrespectful to the establishment. I mean, again, um, I'm not surprised considering who said this. This take was so bad I had to go to bed immediately. Rory Jennings is the prime example of this is sat football podcast culture where saying nonsense for the sake of it is guaranteed success. Something that you see quite often and is popularized by TalkSpot, which of course he's now a popular member of. TalkSport is widely known for just simply saying ridiculous nonsense because you know it's going to get a reaction and from that reaction it means engagements and from that engagements mean monetary value for your videos or whatever so on and so forth. You say things on purpose because you know it's going to annoy people and therefore people click on it and that is what football podcasts are. a chunk of it has become. And if you don't believe me, here's another example. Danny Welbeck. Danny Welbeck goes to the World Cup. What? Genuinely. I genuinely believe <laughs> oh, that. So he's, he's on the same level as Watkins? Yeah. No way. Yes. That is so harsh. This is on Sky Sports. People pay a lot of money for Sky Sports. I don't know what I'm doing here anymore. If you did watch my True Geordie video about a year ago, then you would know that I've watched the kickoff in True Geordie for multiple years. So I'm well known about Rory and I did quite enjoy him at first, but I think over time, it's just too obvious now, lad. And I feel like I should address the elephant in the room here, as of course it's been going on for quite a long time now. By the way, I'm on no one's side. I'm blocked by literally every single person involving the club or the kickoff at the stage. So cheers, lads. It still doesn't sit right with me how the club have just kind of become their own thing and just completely forgot about True Geordie whatsoever and just completely ignored him. There is still this weird awkwardness and elephant in the room involving True Geordie and the, the club guys. You know, I just find it a bit weird. The only time that they've even mentioned True Geordie is when Boovy said that he would fight him. I've got a name. Who? I've got a big name. So would you actually do it? I would. Say the name. Say it. If you'd actually call want them to fight now. them, you have to go and tell start me, calling tell people me. out. With your chest, look down that camera, it. call I, someone out. I'd, I'd fight True Geordie on Misfits. Would you? Yeah, I would. This is a call out. And this is not a call out because I don't respect, I, I respect him, uh, I respect him. But I would have a fight for charity with uh, with uh, True Geordie. I would. And do you think you'd win? Handle no, because he's huge. Like, I don't know, man, honestly. And the reason why I say this is because there's this clip of True Geordie online speaking about these three. And by the way, I, I, I like Adam. I like Adam, I, I respect Adam. The other two, not much, but that's just where I stand. But if you want to see it, this is True Geordie's take. Are you uh, open to reconciliation with old friends? Uh, I think I know what you're getting at, and the answer is no. Uh, that's that's enough for me. I'm, I'm absolutely finished with everyone who claimed to be a friend, but clearly wasn't a friend. And that's it for me. So I'm, I'm more than happy with who, who I'm with, where I am, and people I've got around me. So that looks pretty black and white to me in terms of where he stands and what he thinks about the situation. So to the lads at the club, just own up to it. I'm not going to call you a snake or anything because I don't know the backstory, but come on now. Shall we talk about pitch side now? Let's get into it. As of actually recording this video, there's been a new clip put up. A clip by Pitchside on their socials. 
I think it's kind of obvious where I'm going here. Centre backs, I have Saliba and Fabian Shah. No way. Yeah, and no really. way. No, I mean, I'm he's not fucking, having a mid-table player, player in this phenomenal. team. This, season, no, this so. guy is phenomenal. So you don't think Virgil van Dijk has been in the top two centre backs this season? Now, Fabian Shah deserves to be in there, man. No, he's he doesn't. So good. No, no, mate, because no, he, he brings so much just offensive. No, he doesn't. He has, he no, has he like doesn't. a scream in his. Yes, no. He no, does. No, he doesn't. He's one of the best passers in the just league. Carry on with your he just, it, Seriously, dude. Come on. Dude, <laughs> seriously, dude. Be serious. Come on. No, I am not, mate. I'm not actually genuinely serious. No. No. Obviously not. This is a reoccurring theme that you find with pitch side. And I, I, I'm good, solid mates with Reeve and, and Tom. I think they sound lads. But I think they're onto something here, which is now recurring a lot more often than what it really should be. Pitch side podcast begins. The Newcastle Geordie boy says something stupid. Tom shouts at him. And then that's the podcast. I usually feel quite bad for Eve as he's usually just involved in these. However, this is a recurring theme. Here's some more sample. He reckons Isaac's going to win a Ballon d'Or before. No, Harvard. no, no. Can I... Can I can't, <laughs> let me... No, he's doing the top. <laughs> I'll explain why. No, Lewis, you're wrong. Because no, no, you, see, no, 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 no. You're all just saying you're wrong, you're wrong. No, Lewis, because I actually... Let me shut him down for you. Let me put the keys for Stop speaking for me and let me put my own keys forward. Oh. You just keep... You keep what he said was, Haaland will not win a Ballon d'Or in these coming years. I don't believe he'll do it. I don't think he should because he's a very good goal scorer. Yeah, but that's what not what the Ballon d'Or is for. Isaac, when he's developing a few more years in a high a Newcastle team that's finishing high in the league, right. winning trophies, he has that extra brilliance, that who's, extra spice who's to then be more likely to win the Ballon d'Or. I didn't say he will win the Who, Ballon d'Or. I said younger? he's more Haaland's likely than, younger than Haaland I to win it. Who's Haaland's younger than yes, I do. but he's never going to develop into this player no, here's, flair here's and more brilliant He's twat younger. He's only going to get better. And another one. Wait, we please not go to panics because this is the problem that happens. Yeah. Like, let's not panic and start saying bloody Chelsea about like can put a little put a little bit of respect in our name. Actually. Oh, no, we Are we serious saying Chelsea yeah. is gonna finish above Newcastle? I could be here all day. Now here's Tom. Kudos Palmer, Bowen, and Son. <laughs> no, it's no salary. No. No. Nope. Mo Salah has made your team. He joined the oh. goal scorer of Haaland. Don't care. Mate, no. you are deluded. He's had about four games. Are you like, Liv Liverpool fans have wanted him out of the team recently. Foden has performed better consistently this season. Mate, he's joint golden boot winner at the I moment. I don't care. Watch him play. Mate, use your eyes. S S use your actual eyes. S I'm not saying you're he mental. hasn't. mental. Performance-wise, others have been better. You're just looking at his output, which is what people get blinded no, with Salah. I, th I think creatively he's stepped up this year. No, no, he hasn't. He's, he's got he's, more assists. He's, he's been average in so many games. So many yeah, games. He was terrible against Man United. Terrible. He wasn't very good against Arsenal. Game. When I watch Salah, a lot of the time, he's very average. So you think worth. Mohamed Kudus deserves a place in the team this season over Mohamed Salah? Were they different positions? <laughs> Is, <laughs> Is he the better Mohamed? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's a better footballer than Salah, for sure. Go on. Let's just throw in one more. Actually gone trend in midfield. Oh my god, you actually did. Are you mental? Doing it right now. He's playing Stenwood, he's played two games there. And all time Liverpool Man United. That's bad, mate. I'm not going to lie. Keane is arguably the best midfielder the Prem's ever seen and the best captain we've seen. Trent best played, midfielder we've ever Oh, come on. Who's played, I'll take him over Trent, who's played four games Keane, in the, midfield. The best midfielder the Prem's ever seen. Had one of, yeah. But would you want him in your team? Yeah, you would. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe over Trent, who's played four games there. To have him in a combined 11 in midfield, in a Man United and Liverpool combined I 11, actually... in my opinion, <laughs> is genuinely, borderline criminal. I, I genuinely, I don't even think he's top 40 midfielders. Okay, so I don't want this to become a pitch side hate video by any means. However, when I asked online to give me the worst takes on podcasts, the vast majority was featuring the pitch side. So if it means anything, lads, I know you're watching this, at least you're recognizable. A podcast that I'm sure you've seen around that is quite well known and quite successful is the SDS podcast, which is from Sharky and his group of mates as well. And it's a, a good podcast. I don't actually disrespect it at all. However, there was this absolute banger that came out the other week. I look at Foden because obviously the fact that he's Manchester City's best player and he's there, like you said, their crown jewel of the season. Mm. That's a reflection of where City are at this season. Because I'm saying, and here, here, here I'm saying, here hey, I'm saying, I, I here why I say this because this. I feel like Foden, as good of a technically player he is, to me, and some people might might hate me for saying this here. Yeah? Oh, you dare say he's a luxury player? He's a luxury player. No, oh, damn! Oh. 
Don't Bo- you Bolden. dare. Bolden is a luxury player. But luxury, don't do that. The luxury players don't for me that. are the ones that only can play one position. And yes. can have no, 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 no. But let's but say Foden can play one oh, position. Oh, 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 Foden's, like Foden's a special case though. Foden, I wouldn't put him in that class. When it comes to pitch side or the other lads and like talk sport, you kind of more expect to have a bad take. However, SDS, I do actually have quite a bit of respect for when it comes to their opinions. And this one is just a genuine stinker. I mean, Foden is not a luxury player. Right, simply put, can people actually respect Phil Forden? Because it's quite annoying. I could go on for about 15, 20 minutes showing a bunch of different bad takes, but there's really no point in that, really. I think that the point has been made quite clear. Um, selling microphones has to be cut away quite drastically, I think, for the next year. And again, as I said previously, there's no shame in having a bad take. It happens. However, I do feel like with many podcasts or many different channels, like many fan channels, I think just saying nonsense for the sake of it, as you know, it's going to spike up a lot of anger on social media, is not a smart choice. However, when you're seeing people do that and they get these brand deals and they go on Sky Sports, then I don't really blame people for going down that route. So if you do take anything from this video, Stop taking opinions on football and especially podcasts seriously and stop selling microphones. Irony. Enjoy your day.